If you're like me and you go through a lot of watercolour paper, you've probably figured out that buying full imperial size sheets is the best way to go. However, they are massive. They are 50 centimetres by 70 centimetres. That is huge and most drawers won't fit them. And you can get these specialised art studio or architect studio drawers, usually metal, that can store an imperial size sheet. But they are super expensive, quite ugly. And if it's metal, it's going to make that squeaky noise and it's awful. I've never wanted one of those, but I needed a way to actually store the papers flat, lying down. I used to have them stored upright, which wasn't ideal. But in my previous studio, I didn't have much space to be able to store them flat. But since I moved to the new apartment and we could build our own studio, I could have the space to store them flat. Obviously, I still didn't want those ugly metal things or anything like that because we wanted it to look nice as well as practical. Now, I gave this task to my husband. I said, I need a way to store full sheets of paper. Here's the size. If you can throw in a printer in there, because I have a large A3 printer that needs a home and do it with IKEA, that would be amazing. He's really good at 3D spaces and stuff, whereas I'm definitely a 2D. I can't think in 3D at all. And he came up with an amazing way to store watercolor paper in IKEA stuff. So I'm going to show you this IKEA hack that lets you store four sheets of imperial paper without any problem, doesn't cost you as much, and I will go through the price options as well while we talk about it. So this is my printer station slash paper storage. I'm going to go from the top. This is a little shelf that we just put in. It holds random things like second cassette for the printer, I have a loom here because it's the only place I can put it. And then also I have spare inks for the printer here. Then I have the big A3 printer here. Please ignore my quilting rulers. It's the only place I can store nicely. But then the most important bit is here. Here are all my Imperial sheets. I have Saunders and Waterford here, Bockingford 300 GSM here, other weights of Bockingford and then random other watercolour papers and then printer papers, card papers, random papers are here and then in this very thin narrow shelf I have the photo backgrounds that I use for photographing products. So that's how it looks and as you can see it fits perfect the watercolor papers because i think they're about 55 centimeters i know i kept saying 50 in the <laughs> intro but it fits really well and you just have a little bit of gap on either side so it's not an excessive storage size which is great and obviously it does take up a wardrobe space so you do need that space for that you can just use it as a wardrobe and then just put a couple shelves at the bottom for you to store a couple of batches of paper that's also a possibility as well it is a pax wardrobe system so it can be turned into a normal wardrobe as well I'm going to go through all the parts that you need to put this together and all the dimensions are going to be in centimeters but I'm also going to give you the product code so that you can find it over in other countries like America and be able to look at the size but basically a full imperial size sheet is usually around about 50 by 70 or 55 by 75 so you need something that can hold that. Now the frame that we used for this project was the PAX wardrobe frame and that is 100 centimeters by 58 so perfect by 201 centimeters that's the height of the wardrobe 
And the product code for that is 202.145.66. And that costs 60 pounds or in the US, it costs $125. The shelves I used are the complement shelves and they are 100 by 58 centimeters, obviously designed to go with the Pax wardrobe frame. And the product code for that is 702.779.57. And I used seven of those. They are 10 pound or $20 each. Then we have the door. There are lots of options for doors, but I'm just going to show you the one that I went for. And I went for a mirrored one because I wanted to make the room look bigger with the mirrors. And so I went with the Vicodel 50 by 195 centimeters size door. And I obviously bought two of them. And the product code for that is 7 zero zero dot two three three dot one nine and that is a 40 pound each for a door and you obviously need two of them or 70 dollar each in the us now if you do go for doors you do need to buy door hinges that are sold separately and we didn't realize this at the time so i just want to mention that the hinges we went for uh the complement soft closing hinge Product code is 002.145.05 and it costs £10 for three of them, but you do need six. Three of them will get you enough hinges to put one door on, so you need to get two packs. And it's $25 for three of the hinges, and again, you need two of those. For door handles, you can pick any door handle you like. You do have to be a bit more careful when you use. A mirrored door because it can't just drill into the mirror so I went for the Bills Bro handle silver 12 centimeters and the product code for that is 703.236.02 and that was seven pound for the pair now I couldn't find this on the IKEA website when I searched for it but you can get similar Bills Bro style handles they're just a little bit longer or really short of course if you don't go for a mirror door you can go for any door frame you like now let's do the prices so for frame plus seven shelves which is what I went for is 130 pounds in the UK. In the US, it is $265, which is so much cheaper than those architectures office drawers. The doors and the trimmings, the hinges and the handles, they cost £107 in the UK and $200 in the US. So you can see that costs quite a lot. So if you are keeping to a budget, then it's probably better to go with outdoors, maybe put curtains on the where the papers are. It's entirely up to you. In total, I spent £237 for this setup and the equivalent will be about $465. Not related to paper, but I just wanted to let you know that because this printer is massive, we did reinforce this shelf, the where it connects to the wardrobe. We just got some, I don't know what they're called, but some sort of brackets <laughs> um, just to give it extra strength, just so that this metal part, I, you can tell that it's not me that put this together. So these are the standard bits that hold the shelf that IKEA provides you with and we just put an extra couple on both sides to give this shelf an extra hold. I hope going through the details of this project is useful to you. I hope someone out there uses this as a system because I think it's a great system. And I'm very grateful for my husband for being so talented in 3D spaces to be able to put this together. If you have any questions, then do let me know in the comments down below. If you have other ways, and especially if you have other idea hacks on how to store full sheets of watercolor paper, then do let me know in the comments down below. And also, even if you don't have full imperial size sheets papers, let me know how you store your paper because it's always good resource for us to share in the comments how we do things because we all have our own ways and you guys come up with some amazing ideas so thank you so much for sharing your knowledge in this okay i'm gonna go please subscribe and hit the like button if this video was useful to you and i will speak to you in the next video bye